Um, oh, where am I? Uh, Margot uh, Purpick, and we'll we'll do the three together, if that's all right, because they're, they're really you're coming from the it's same obviously. business, and um, yeah, but you've you've got points that you want to make, so I kind of run across them and see how we go with time and, and then we'll open it up for questioning. But thank you very much for be being thank cooperative you. in that regard. Which one do I click? The right or the left? going to make me feel guilty already. <laughs> Just the first slide. <laughs> I know I should be doing it. <laughs> it's only a block down the road, Leanne. I know. <laughs> well, good afternoon, Madam Mayor and, and, and councillors. And uh, Catherine came once. Did she? <laughs> yeah. She Hopeless. said she said it was great, but she came once. Yeah. <laughs> Hopeless. <laughs> Uh, my name's Hamish Kenworthy. My wife Margot Perpick and I, we opened Apollo Power Yoga in uh, July 2013. It's just down the road at 107 Hereford Street in the Ibis Hotel building. We wanted to be a part of the central city recovery. We felt that there was tremendous potential uh, for businesses to flood back into the void that had been created by the earthquakes. Um, and we wanted to be a part of that. And we had been a part of it previously when we were professionals working in the legal profession. Mm. Apollo Power Yoga has attracted thousands of people back into the central city, and many of them comment that the only reason that they've come back in since February 2011 is to come to our studio. So uh, we, we've been a draw for people to revisit the central city. With road closures, noise, vibrations, dust, uh, it hasn't been an easy process building up our business. We started from scratch in July 2013. We weren't a relocated business. We were new to uh, uh, our studio was a new creation. Um, and we had strong growth in the course of our first year. But we noticed around the middle of about 2014 that um, Parking difficulties for our customers coming into the central city started to put a handbrake on the pace of our progress. When we don't see a, st a student for a while and we follow them up and, and ask reasons why, uh, in invariably a, a reason cited by them is the difficulty of access, uh, difficulty of parking, cost of parking. When we started the studio, there were several nearby vacant lots that people could park on for free. Uh, the Restart Park car park by Ballantyne's and the On Street car parks had the first two hours of parking time free, and there were no restrictions on the uh, street car parks as to time. We were aware that the vacant lots would eventually be taken up by the owners and developers wanting to participate in the rebuild. But at that time, the draft transport plan showed numerous off-street car parking buildings that were to be part of the rebuild and close into the center of the city. The council's practice at that time of offering free car parking in the central city also seemed reasonable, uh, as that's what's provided on suburban streets around suburban malls, so that businesses in those areas can offer both uh, their staff and their customers free parking. We assumed that that level playing field would continue on uh, be available to us on, on a longer term basis. The vacant lots used on an ad hoc basis for parking are becoming fewer and further and further from the centre of the city. They are dirty, unsealed lots, they are unlit after dark, and they're not a solution for the problem of where people are to park their cars if the rebuild is to be successful. And I pose the question, where does the council propose that the large numbers of people anticipated to return to the centre of the city where are they going to park their cars? What the council is now doing, we submit is seriously unfair to central city businesses and it will kill the recovery if it continues. Charging over $3 per hour for parking on central city streets when on-street parking is free near suburban businesses literally drives people away from the centre and out into the suburbs. Restricting on-street parking in the central city to 60 minutes where most suburban streets are not time restricted or uh, not time restricted to the same degree also makes central city businesses a much less attractive option for customers. If someone's made the effort to get a car into the centre 
and has managed to find a park, they will want to stay for more than an hour. And we submit that the council should be encouraging people to come in, use several businesses over several hours, instead of rushing them away after just one hour. Reducing on-street parking times from two hours to one hour does not double the number of people who can make use of the car parks, as a council parking employee has said to us. You lose all the people who need to use parks for more than an hour. So if someone's coming in to visit a professional for advice, or they're coming in to exercise, or to shop and eat with a friend, or to visit a gallery, or to go to a movie, or to dine in a restaurant, or any individual or combination of factors, it, they can't park. The program that you've called the Accessible City is actually making the central city inaccessible to people who aren't walking or biking. That program is removing hundreds of on-street parking spaces and central city businesses are just supposed to grin and bear it. Uh, we made a submission on the Accessible City consultation asking you to defer the program for um, uh, the removal of on-street parks uh, until such time as there were sufficient off-street car parks to meet the necessary demand. That submission fell on deaf ears, and yet when the proposal was made that a few car parks on Rickerton Road be removed so that there could be a bus interchange, the local businesses there said, this is not good, this is not fair, and it seems that you acceded to their demands. Trying to create a culture change as to traffic use by picking on one part of the city in isolation, and it's a vulnerable part of the city, the future of the central city is yet to be uh, made certain, and it needs encouragement to ensure its viability. Picking on that one area to create the culture change will not work. People will simply opt to stay out of the central city and go to suburban areas for their needs. If there was a reasonable amount of off-street parking available with the first three hours free, for instance, the on-street situation might not be so crucial, but there isn't. The City Council has not replaced the off-street parking capacity it provided prior to the earthquakes, and the LTP doesn't seem to be making provision for these. Leaving it up to private providers to possibly supply the capacity, but inevitably at very expensive rates, will kill the central city recovery. Uh, we believe that the Council, having been a principal, prov principal provider of off-street parking uh, for short-term stays prior to the earthquakes, the Council cannot simply vacate that role and leave it to private providers. We do understand that the vision for the central city is to make it more pedestrian and cyclist friendly, and we do not disagree with that. We look forward to the time when the central city is once again full of people, but right now it is very sparsely populated in terms of both businesses and residents, and may remain so unless there are sufficient incentives and forms of encouragement to draw people back in. The businesses with the courage to locate here are still dependent upon people travelling into the centre from the suburbs. To do so by bus or bike is not realistic for most people. We have students from as far away as Rangiora, Ohoka, Taitapu, Prebleton and Sumner. They should not be excluded or discouraged from patronising central city businesses by the City Council's parking policies. We, and many other central city businesses, have lease renewal decisions coming up. If things stay the way they are, we would be most inclined to move our studio to the suburbs, which is where the Council's policies are encouraging businesses to locate. Thank you. Afternoon, Madam Mayor, Councillors. I'm Margot Perpick. As Hamish said, we've been operating the Apollo Power Yoga Studio since 2013. Up until then, I was a partner in the law firm of Wynne Williams. And with that background, I want to give you a few examples of how City Council's parking policies have been affecting the central city recovery. Before the earthquakes, Wynne Williams was located in the BNZ building at the corner of Colombo and Hereford Street. And the large majority of other major Christchurch law firms were also located in the old CBD within walking distance of the courts. We regularly surveyed our clients at Wynne Williams to find out what they thought about our services and how we could improve. And one of the issues that always came up, even prior to the quakes, was the parking. People found it difficult to get a park, they thought the charges were too expensive, and they let us know about it. But with almost all of the lawyers, as particularly the bigger firms located in the central city, clients had very little choice about just having to pay for parking. 
That changed after the quakes, when William's temporary premises were in a big box retail development at the end of Marshlands Road, and clients and staff got used to driving their cars right up to the office and parking for free. When we decided to move back into the central city, when Wynne Williams, the law firm, decided to move back into the central city, there was a lot of negative feedback from clients and staff about having to pay for parking again. I would imagine that similar feedback to other professional firms was at least part of the reason why so many of them have located their offices outside of the central city. Ask yourselves why firms like Buttle Finlay, Duncan Cottrell, and Young Hunter have put their offices in Victoria Street. And why Boffa Miskel, the firm that created the Central City Recovery Plan Blueprint, is in Hazeldean, in Addington? <laughs> I'd say the fact that they can park for free out there would have something to do with it. It's, as a professional firm, if your clients are going to get riled up by having to pay for parking, you give them the choice, the choice that they want of not having to pay. Operating Apollo Power Yoga with Hamish, we're finding that the parking shortage and the charges are a significant impediment to growing a, a Central City business. While the cost of parking is marginal compared to a lawyer's bill or an accountant's bill, it's a big difference to the cost of one yoga class or coffee in a cafe or going to a movie. It's not just our business that feels this effect. I've heard students at our studio say that they'd like to support other central city businesses, such as, say, going to a movie at Alice in Video Land and then off to um, uh, one of the bars around there or restaurants after up, but they look at the fact that they've got to pay for parking even on a Saturday evening in the central city and they go to the Colombo instead. This effect is flowing through to depress the numbers of businesses that are interested in coming back to the central city. The Wynn Williams building right next to you has been ready for tenants since last year and they can't get any apart from Wynn Williams taking up the top three floors, but they were committed to that several years ago. We have students who had businesses in town before the quakes and who are still in the suburban locations they were relocated to after the quakes. And they tell us that they admire us for coming into the central city, but they're choosing not to um, expose their own businesses to these conditions. In relation to parking charges, we're asking you to use your powers fairly. Stop tilting the, play the playing field in favor of suburban businesses. The entire city would function better if we could get hundreds of businesses back into the central city. But that won't happen if the city council keeps making it more attractive to do business in the suburbs. And as far as parking capacity goes, we urge you to get back in the game. Parking buildings were a money maker for the council prior to the quakes, and they should be that again. You've had no return on the council car parking buildings for over four years, which is ridiculous when you're facing a large funding shortfall. Council-run car parks can return revenue for the council while keeping the market rate for parking at a reasonable rate so that people are not put off coming into the central city by the exorbitant charges that you get in uh, some of the other cities here and in Australia. We're passionate about seeing the, the central city get back up on its feet, and we're just asking the city council not to keep kicking it back down. Just, okay. So you, are you good now for questions? Yes. Yes, we are. Thank you. So um, two of our car park buildings were in um, the frame and have been compulsorily really acquired by the Crown. So. It's not as though we are unwilling to get, you know, parking up and running, but, um, you know, it is kind of difficult to do that when your buildings happen to be in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Well, Hamish mentioned the, um, the draft, I think it was the chapter of the recovery plan that dealt with transport as a draft. Mm. That showed lots of little car parks sort of scattered throughout, almost one each block, and that seemed sensible to me. Um, but that just seems to have gone by the wayside. Is that the accessible city chapter of the central city recovery plan? This is back when it was the yeah the, the draft uh, chapter before you, it became. Are you sh well? Was it mm. the draft accessible city chapter, or are you going back yes. to after sharing? I don't idea? think it was called accessible city then. When it was just um, a draft chapter of the central city recovery plan that dealt with oh, transport. Yeah, no, no. The yeah. council did have a view that mm. instead of having these massive buildings, that they actually should have um, smaller mm. ones, and it was the same with bus stops as well. Yeah. They didn't want one great big interchange, they wanted to have it distributed through four um, locations. Yeah, so I'm not saying you have to go back and rebuild you know, Manchester Street that is in the frame, as you say, yeah. um, but that capacity, that capacity's got to be replicated somewhere. Yes, I know, and yeah. that, that's why we've gone out to um, test the market to see what, what the opportunities are. Mm. Um, Jamie. Um, thank you for, for that. Um, there was a submission that we had, I don't know if we've already heard it or if I've read it and we're going to be hearing it shortly, um, 
it all <laughs> there ends up being a blur after over, a while, over doesn't this, it? Over this uh, period of time. <laughs> but um, I went through a submission. Anyway, and it made mention of a targeted rate in the central city and advocating council to, to further explore that. Um, obviously with malls, free parking from the consumer's perspective, from a tenant's perspective, it's not free at all. No, you it's know, not. The, it's it, part it, of what the rent you pay. To, I understand to your that. Mm. So I'm interested to, to explore with this. Um, that combined, cohesive, joint vision, collective approach uh, doesn't exist in a central city, and that's an asset in some ways, and it also holds us back in others. Mm. Would you, as a small business owner, be uh, uh, amicable, I suppose, to, to further explore a targeted rate, a small percentage, if uh, collective marketing or potentially free parking uh, is then a possibility? Yeah, I think that's realistic. It's I, I'm on the Central City Business Association, and we have discussed that, and we think that that is the way it's it needs to go um, in order to get the same... Uh, synergies, I suppose, operating amongst central city businesses as happens in a mall. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, Phil, and thank you. Um, I just wondered if you've seen the recent uh, um, central city parking plan. It came to our Infrastructure, Transport and Environment Committee. It hasn't been signed off by council, but I just wondered if you've had opportunity to see that. No, and I haven't. Not. Okay, I haven't, and so it may address um, some of your concerns. Clearly, there are some issues for short term parking. But I did want to ask you about the concept of having three years for uh, on street and off street parking free. Do you know of any other major cities where, in fact, that has worked? I understand, um, and this is second hand information, but uh, somebody else that I'm on the Central City Business Association with says that in Rotorua they have the first two hours free, and it's all dealt with by un under street uh, monitoring in some way. I'd really be interested in any major cities, for example, um, <laughs> Auckland or Melbourne. Or, yeah. But if, if there is... No. We do have a unique situation here, Councillor, though. I mean, how many cities have had the middle of them just basically bombed out? You have to get the businesses back into the central city. Yeah, well, Manchester did, and, and that's why we had the Lord Mayor come over as part of the Share an Idea mm. um, international speaker series. And, you know, we've had a lot of um, insight from how other cities do it, but don't necessarily feel that we're entirely taking that on board. Um, Tim? I just think, what about a, a minimum charge for two to three hours rather than an exorbitant charge for an hour? I mean, that's I mean, just spreading the load but making it less as well. So, rather, well, what, what are you, well, what are you well, talking rather than about? say the first one around free, mm -hmm. first one or two hours free, that you put it in and you get two hours for a, a, a low amount or three hours for a low amount. Yeah, well, that's how the restart um, Mall by a uh, car park by Ballantines is operating. I think it's 50 cents an hour. Yeah. Um, so yeah. if you're only paying for two hours parking, then it's only a dollar, and people don't mind that. It's when yeah. they have to pay, you know, over six dollars to park for two hours that they think, well, this is making us a fairly expensive yoga class. Six dollars <laughs> on top of eighteen dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Yeah. But you would be open to you would be. Yeah. Fun. Yeah, just something that makes it attractive to come back into the central city instead of discouraging. Yes, there's a Wilson's car park just along Hereford Street. Uh, beyond the old BNZ building um, where they have all day parking for $4. Uh, and some of our students park there because... It's cheaper for it's, an all day it's, park. It's, it's cheaper than trying to be on, on street for $3 and $3 maybe get 20. fined. Yeah. Uh, or walk much further yeah. if they're pressed for time. I have actually done that myself. Yeah. So I totally agree that, yeah. you and, know, uh, but uh, Wilson's is a private company yes. and you're asking the ratepayer to subsidise the, um, the cost of parking. Well, it's, it doesn't have to be a subsidy. No, 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 well, yeah. that's, that's the, that is the mm. issue and um, I guess that's the point that we need to, need to debate. It's, it's, it's no more of a subsidy than the City Council having available car parks in suburban areas that are not charged for that are occupied by people visiting suburban malls. But this is, this is why, but that was the point, that they're not actually free to the... To the, the on the street they are. The city council owns the streets all over the city. They're not free to the, um, to the shop owners. On the street, that's why we have rules about where businesses can develop, because, you know, the on-street parking in those areas, it becomes a nightmare if you're in a residential area. So. I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting point, but I think, I mean, you, you have definitely made your point, and I think that, um, you know, we... And, and just in relation to that, you do have suburban rules, but you need to then monitor the resource consents of the businesses that uh, have them because of traffic generation rules. Yeah. Uh, we've been told by the 
council offices that unless there's a complaint, you don't monitor. Um, and we're aware of businesses that are outside of the scope of their resource consents, not just at a marginal degree, by a very substantial degree in suburban yeah. areas, which is preferring those businesses by not choosing to enforce them yeah. while you do employ people to enforce parking. Yeah. Um, the other, just one last comment, Madam Mayor, uh, you, you mentioned the fact that the car parking buildings were within the frame and compulsory purchase by the Crown. You're not just at the whim or a victim of the, Sarah, the, the, your, your partner's in this rebuild and if, 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 if yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, if, if the land is being taken for one purpose, your mind turns to other land, what other opportunities are there? And at the moment, we're not quite seeing, subject to uh, what Councillor Clearwater has said about new plans that, that, that we haven't seen, we're, we're not aware of how it's going to come about that people who want to visit the city will be accommodated. Yeah, look, the, the, the Litchfield Street car park is, is on its way down, and mm. um, and that's you know going to be the beginning of the, another process. As you know, the crossing car park is an arrangement we've entered into with the, um, the people involved in that development. Um, so so we, we, we are getting there, but I, it is frustrating in terms of the, the timetable for a lot of these decisions and, of course, um, the frustration of losing um, particular car parks, as you said, which were essentially a really good income earner for the council. Mm -hmm. And um, the fact that the... Uh, you know, an earthquake levy was basically put on our rate system to replace income. I mean, I've, I just, it's absolutely beyond comprehension that we would end up um, taking on debt in order to, um, in order to fund missing revenue. So, but anyway, our inheritance is what it is, and that's why we're doing the long-term plan. So, um, thank you very much for your submission. It's, uh, thank, very, thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for your Appreciate very your timely time. and worthwhile. Um, and David Cairns, if we could move on to you.